How fast can you cool? Crackle Design Venturi fans, not just for computers. Oops. Hello everyone, I'm Dmitry with Hardware Canucks and uh, on the review table today is a product that will for sure divide the consumer base. I'm saying this because we are at a point in time where there's no escape or potentially useless features entering into anything gaming. And I'd like to start a discussion about how you feel of RGB lighting into peripherals in general, but what about headsets? Is there space for RGB lighting on something that you never see? or never even care about. The Corsair Void RGB wireless headset is under analysis for this video. Corsair is introducing a variety of additions to span the largest consumer base for the Void headset line. Everything from the black stereo version to USB version in white and black and wireless RGB edition with black and this yellow jacket edition, the one retailing for $130 and $150 US respectively. The yellow combination initially did not sit well with me, especially because of the multicolor elements on the ear cups. Uh, it is a simple logo illumination with that broken down strip underneath, but I'm sure many would agree of this RGB customization is not exactly welcome on a yellow body headset. Now there is a black version for the RGB wireless edition which makes a bit more sense for color customization because you're not obstructed by the massive yellow body, but to be honest, the yellow has kind of grown on me. I mean, you'd still need to probably populate your entire peripherals with Corsair's yellow line peripherals for the void to feel in place. Uh, but even if you're wondering why Corsair would attempt such a color scheme, and it's all about branding. Esports and video game streaming is booming, so this is sort of one of those best marketing practices for immediate brand recognition. And so moving on, the build quality is not all 100%. But there are some aluminum integrations for the swivel joints, but the rest of the construction is plastic. And while it's good to maintain a lightweight profile, you don't necessarily get the confident sense. Like the swivel joints are a little bit loose. The same story with the microphone that has a built-in rotation steps, but they feel so weak and I question if at some point they'll just give out. The microphone is not flexible and it's not removable and I feel put the headphones down the wrong way several times and something just might snap. All of the controls are in the left ear cup, include the power switch and the mic mute right below that is also used to enable or disable side tone, which is the microphone's feedback to you so you can hear what you're saying during game time. I love this feature. There's a swivel button for the volume control that has a built-in click that allows you to change EQ on the fly by quickly pressing it and an audio cue will play uh, corresponding to any of the five EQ presets and long pressing it to enable or disable Dolby surround, again with a distinct audio cue. Finally, there's a micro USB underneath to charge the headset, which you can do without interrupting your audio playback if connected to a computer uh, or if the hub is connected. Now the completely disappointing aspect of the Void Wireless is the fact that you cannot use them in wired mode. I understand the convenience of buying something wireless to use them wirelessly, but uh, the U micro USB here is only for charging. You cannot pass any data through it. So in order to you, for you to receive the audio signal between the headset and the computer, you have to use the USB hub. And it would have been great to just connect the USB here in case you forget the hub somewhere else and still want to use the void wireless. The second biggest disappointment is battery life. So I started writing the script around 10 a.m. this morning. I did some gaming. I was listening to music throughout the entire time. So the headphone was constantly working on something uh, except for one hour when I was just left at idle. It wasn't passing any audio through it. At 4 p.m., six hours later, I get the low battery beep. So the battery must have been below 25% at the time. So at six hours, for just listening to music and gaming with RGB enabled, you won't even be able to sit through an entire day of LAN if that was the case. But Corsair recommends if you are uninterested in the RGB lighting effects, you can disable all the lighting on the headset to greatly extend 
battery life, which also disables the uh, very helpful notifications on the microphone, by the way. So that's not cool. So I redid my tests and uh, instead of lasting about six hours with the RGB enabled, I could easily last more than 25 hours of constant use with the headset. So 25 hours, there was a signal coming through at all times. And so my, my advice, turn off RGB. I choose battery life over some blinking lights which are nothing special by the way, you can choose any color you want, sure, the 16.7 million colors, and the 11 effects are just some variation of blinking speed or breathing. There's actually no way to link lighting behavior to the audio source, and the fact that it drains the battery this quick, it should just be turned off. Now, comfort-wise, they are size adjustable, and given their front front leading nature like so, uh, throughout my gaming session, I found them to slightly start to slide off forward, cupping my ears in the process and making concentrating some pressure, uh, unpleasant pressure behind my ears. And partially the reason I think the ear cups are not optimally shaped, as it narrows near the back and regardless of how I try to position the ear cups, there's just no way the void would cover my entire ear without pressing on some specific part. The ear cups though are removable, thus could be replaced in the future, and I like this material because it can breathe, there's zero issues with sweat or heat concentration, but it's not the most pleasant material for long-term use. And for those with sensitive skin, I would say just be aware, and I really wish that Corsair would have included uh, extra velour pads, so you can substitute this if you are not totally comfortable with this material, especially for 150 bucks. The microphone rotates only, there are two LEDs in the front to indicate the status of the mic mute and which EQ setting you're using, and I think the intent here is for those lights to be out of sight but still in your peripheral vision so you can see them. Unfortunately, I can't even see them despite where I position the microphone. So what I found out to do is if I mute my microphone right now. I can bring my hand closer there to see if the LED reflection is there and that would indicate if I mute the microphone and also if I have the uh, side tone enabled I could clearly hear if the microphone is muted and that's uh, helping a lot. Um, unfortunately the microphone doesn't sound that great. It's fine for in-game chat and talking to your teammates but nowhere the quality that you would expect for professional gaming commentary. Now this being a wireless headset, the special edition comes with an extension base to broaden your range into which you plug the USB hub and the 2.4 GHz signal has a range of about 12 meters with the line of sight which remained clean up to 5 meters but then started to experience some crackle as walls and other abstractions were on the way. So let's get into sound quality. Despite being yellow, feature you can say pointless RGB lighting and being not 100% satisfactory for comfort, I was genuinely happy in the sound signature considering it's wireless and gaming oriented. The wireless signal was completely clean, there was no hum or audible interference and almost like I'm wearing a wired headphone. There are a couple of built-in profiles that are excellent with delivery of exactly what you hear with pure direct bass boost that lifts off the low end region super well without muffling the sound signature and hitting the bass just perfectly for a bit more power and impact for games, yet with distinct and clear high tones. FPS competitor mode was my favorite, it brings up the mids so you hear your environment very well. Clear chat brings up the treble, but I didn't find that mode interesting. And lastly, movie theater, that's more of a V curve. Now for music playback, I left it at a simple stereo mode with pure direct sound, which was didn't give me any coloration, which was fine for music. But for movies and gaming, I enabled Dolby surround sound, which was fantastic. I really enjoyed my experience with finally with uh, virtual surround sound and uh, the EQ profiles that Corsair has provided here are absolutely fantastic. So I used the FPS competitor mode for Battlefield 4. It was a 32 man server. Uh, with uh, hardcore mode, so you need to rely on audio cues to know where the enemy is coming from and if somebody is coming behind you or something. And I could easily hear where it's coming around me. Directional systems were absolutely uh, phenomenal. You can clearly feel the distance of how uh, far the audio sources are from you. So that's the beauty of Dolby Surround. Audio is not concentrated in the headphones in here, but it feels like they're bigger speakers right in front of you, and there's very good stereo projection that helps with that um, uh, directional assistance. Now, the beauty of the EQ uh, tuner is the fact that you can adjust certain settings. If you are not totally satisfied with the bass, you can still bring that up and really fine tune the sound signature to what you like to hear for your games. 
and there was still plenty of juice left inside the headphone for higher volumes. I gained at 60% volume, that gave me very good you know, uh, level of uh, what I want to hear without blasting my ears off, but turned it up uh, for more for while I was listening to music and also movies without introducing any interference or noise or any humming in the signal, and that is very impressive. And so in conclusion, the Void Wireless is the best wireless gaming headset that I've listened to. There's a clean signal, excellent EQ presets, full bass extension and clear mid-range, RGB on the headset is excellent for marketing and brand recognition, but pointless to consumers, especially with such heavy battery drain. The microphone quality is subpar, both in quality and form, and no different material air cushions are available. And it seems many premium elements are void, excuse the pun, uh, as they sound fantastic, but don't completely satisfy in any other area. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This concludes the review of the Void Wireless RGB from Corsair. Let us know what you think of this color scheme and of course the RGB stuff. Would you get something like this in the uh, compromise of uh, massive battery drain or not? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more similar content and we'll see you in the next one.